you're using a new to-do app is what I heard, a uh, Luna task, I think. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> it's not just a to-do app. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, sounds okay. like you have a lot to say. This, this requires some context. So I've been using Todoist for a long time because frankly, there's nothing better. I will, I will die on the hill that <laughs> things is well below Todoist and really anything. Um, but what I really didn't like was that I felt like a lot of these things in my life that were part of my daily routines should have been in the same place. So I journal in Crypty. I keep track of my calendar and my calendar, and then I keep track of my to-do list on Todoist. But these all felt like the same thing. It was all part of the same workflow. And so in my head, I was like, well, I wish there was something that just combined all of it in one place, no? And everyone kept recommending Notion. And let me tell you, I tried Notion, and it was awful. I, I, I am convinced that there is... There might be like one in a hundred people who actually use Notion properly because it's so complicated, it's so advanced, and I realized very quickly that to set it up the way I wanted it set up, it would be a full-time job practically. Notion is really like the modern version of Microsoft Excel. I feel like in the 2010s, it was like very common for like entire businesses to be run entirely in Excel spreadsheets because people just had the most incredibly complex formulas to do everything. This is like a common thing that I heard among among office workers. And now it's like Notion is also trying to be this do everything app. And it um, doesn't do it. It, it, it sucks it, at it's everything. like crazy. <laughs> like, I don't know, like it wasn't better than Todoist as a to-do list program. It wasn't better than my calendar to check my events and keep up with things. It wasn't better than my journaling app for journaling. It just it tries to do everything and it kind of falls short in every place and you kind of have to use hacky workarounds for a lot of things so mm -hmm. i i actually don't get the notion hype anyway where this led was i kind of made the assessment that there this doesn't exist there is no app that can do everything and bring your life into one place that's what i thought until i found lunatask i am not associated with lunatask i <laughs> I, I just love it. Someone brought it up on our forum, so I learned about this on our forum. Pretty much Lunatask has notes, habits, to do, and things like you can link it to your calendar so you can see your calendar, drag over your tasks. It automatically, um, it uses different... So one tough thing about Todoist is I have like my personal life, I have TechLore, I have Cake Wallet, I have like pe relationships that I have with people and I try to tr keep track of that within different projects. But it is, it, it takes so much time for me to organize and prioritize things properly, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know how to, if I have 20 things to do in a day, how do I pick which ones to start with? And so every day, it's this whole thing of like, okay, well, I need to put half an hour into just deciding what to do. Lunatask actually is like intelligent enough to see how you prioritize things. And it actually suggests it for you. And within each area of your life, you can have it categorized differently. Because one issue I was having was for work, something like, you know, a, a plan by the week thing was really good for tech lore. Like this is, these are the three things I want to do each day of this week. But that didn't work well for my personal life. My personal life, just having a long priority based list was the best thing. You can do that in Lunatask. You can set like different, it has built in Eisenhower matrix support. You can change different things. It's all end-to-end -end encrypted. I've been using it for habit tracking. Because honestly, I don't know why not every to-do program has habits integrated within it. It's the same thing. It's just a different interface for a similar concept. So it also has a yeah. lifetime purchase option, which I have not purchased yet because I'm still playing with it. But it's been, what, over a week since I made this post on Mastodon and I'm in love and I'm probably going to cancel my Todoist. The only thing it's not good for is because it's end-to-end -end encrypted, um, it's not good for collaborative stuff. So I still have Todoist for the TechLore project because that's what I use to like do things with our editor. Ideally Jonah, but Jonah never logs in. So <laughs> we don't use to do this with Jonah. But um, yeah, it's, it's been awesome. I don't know if you tried it. That's, that's exciting. Uh, I, I think it's clear I'm not as into to-do list apps as you. I don't know all these things like Eisenhower matrixes <laughs> or stuff like that. This seems very uh, complex, but I'm glad that it works for you. And yeah, one of you watching, uh, remember to ask for the November live stream uh, if it's still going well for Henry. <laughs> we'll see if the honeymoon period <laughs> wears off after yeah. the speaker, if you're still going strong next month. I, I honestly don't think, and again, like there always is a honeymoon period when you try new workflows. 
This one just feels very different than that. It feels like, oh my gosh, this is what I've wanted for so long. That just never existed. Heads up, it is not open source, but the way I'm looking at it is what is, what is the open source alternative to this? There is none. I can't even find a good cross-platform open source to-do app that just keeps a basic to-do list that I can't self-host myself. Like I know Synology has one, but it's kind of garbage. And then I don't want to have to spin up Nextcloud just for to-do and productivity. So anyway, Lunatask, awesome. It's cross-platform. You can get on Android. A web app is supposedly like in their idea list. It is not open source. I wish it was, but it, that's also on their idea list. But also, again, I, I kind of fight back on people a little bit because it's like, what is the open source alternative to this? At the end of the day, every yeah. mainstream provider that offers something similar doesn't even offer end-to-end -end encryption, and this does. So that's a big upgrade in my eyes. And the last thing I'll say, does not work with lockdown mode. You can't log in really? on iOS with lockdown mode. So you have to disable lockdown mode put in your encryption key and re-enable lockdown mode. And that's because it uses some kind of web uh, technology to like process the decryption key. Interesting. Weird. Yeah, I reached out to their that's support strange. and they added it to their official documentation. So you should be able to find that in their documentation now because I fucked them about it. <laughs> well, hopefully they fixed that. Um, yeah, not open source is a bummer, but end-to-end -end encryption I think is huge. And that's also a thing that you don't really see with, I mean, like to do app, to do with and obviously apps like Notion, for example. So huge benefit for Lunatesk there. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Highly recommend. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this TechLore clip. This is actually a highlight from our main channel, TechLore, where we talk about digital rights, privacy, security, and how you can have a better relationship with technology. So if you want the full length experience, definitely check out our main channel, TechLore. We'll leave a link somewhere on the screen, wherever our editor puts it, and you can probably check it down in the description as well.